Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vectors and projectiles. The topic of this video is vector resolution. Here are the two questions we wish to answer. How can the graphical method be used to determine the components of a vector? And how can the trigonometric method be used to determine the components of a vector? Let's get started. In the previous video of this series, we talked about vector components. Let's review. We mentioned that angled vectors have two parts, known as vector components. For instance, here in the diagram, we notice a force vector acting up on a block. The force vector has an x component directed rightward and a y component directed upward. These two vector components describe the effect that, vector, that this force vector has in a given direction. If you wish to determine the vector components for any vector, you simply have to project the vector onto the x and y axes by sketching perpendicular projections from the arrowhead of the vector perpendicular to the axes. The process of determining the magnitude and direction of a vector's components is known as vector resolution. Here we'll discuss the graphical method of vector resolution. It relies on the idea that a vector components are projections of the vector onto the x and the y axes. Here's how we get it done. First we go to the tail of the vector and we draw a little hash mark. And from this tail we'll extend horizontal and vertical axes the length of vector A. Then we'll go to the arrowhead of vector A and we'll draw perpendicular projections to the axes. And where these projections intersect, that's the, that limits the length of the vector components. And we'll draw the components from the tail of the vector out to these intersection points and label them AX and AY. If we wish to use this graphical method to determine the magnitude of the components, then we would draw vector A to scale. And then what we would do is measure the length of the components AX and AY and then use the scale to convert the length of the components to real-world magnitude values of AX and AY. Now I'm going to use the graphical method to determine the magnitude and direction of this velocity vector. I want to find VX and VY in the indicated space. I begin by indicating the scale that 1 centimeter equal 50 kilometers per hour. That makes my vector 8.4 centimeters long. I decide on a starting point and I mark the origin at the starting point. Then I want to measure 25 degrees south of west. That would be 205 degrees counterclockwise from east. I mark a reference point and then then I draw out my vector, 8.4 centimeters long. Then I label the magnitude in the direction of this vector, and I place an arrowhead on it. Now I go to the tail of the vector, and I sketch out my x and y axes, the entire length of the vector. Now I'm going to go to the arrowhead of the vector and draw perpendicular projections to these x and y axes, and I'm going to mark the intersection point. Now I can draw the components from the tail of the vector out to these intersection points along the y-axis to find the vy component and along the x-axis to show the vx component. Now I take my ruler and I measure the length of these components and then I use the scale in a calculator to convert from the measured length to real-world units. I do the same thing for the y component. Measure the length and do a scale conversion to get the magnitude of that component and I'm done. Great job. Now we will discuss the trigonometric method of vector resolution. This method relies upon an understanding of the sine, cosine, and tangent functions from trigonometry. Here we see a right triangle and the hypotenuse is labeled, and one of the acute angles within the triangle is labeled with theta. The sine of theta tells us the relationship between the length of the side opposite theta, in this case the y component, and the hypotenuse's length. The cosine of theta tells us the relationship between the length of the adjacent side and the length of the hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta tells us the relationship between the length of the opposite side and the adjacent side. While it's not always the case, in this right triangle, as we've defined theta, the y component happens to be the side opposite theta, and the x component is the side that's adjacent to theta. I will now demonstrate the use of the trigonometric method to determine the components of this force vector having a magnitude of 215 newtons and a direction of 128 degrees counterclockwise from east. I'll begin by drawing this northwest vector. It's 128 degrees from east, which makes it 38 degrees past north and 52 degrees north of west. 
Now this the magnitude's 215 newtons, and what I need to do is find a triangle that has this force vector as the hypotenuse. So I'll begin by sketching a parallelogram around this force vector. This gives me a triangle above and to the right of the force vector, and a triangle below and to the left of the force vector. It doesn't matter which I pick. I'm going to pick the one that is below and to the left of the force vector. It has an angle of 52 degrees north of west. That's measured at the tail of the vector. And the components of this vector are the sides of this right triangle. There they are, fx along the horizontal side, fy along the vertical side. I want to calculate their values. They are the side adjacent and the side opposite of the angle 52 degrees. I'm going to use cosine of 52 degrees to relate the adjacent side to the hypotenuse of 215 newtons. The adjacent side is fx, the hypotenuse 215 newtons. So I set up my co cosine function as shown. Then I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 215 newtons and use my calculator in order to determine the value of fx. It comes out to be 132 newtons. Now for fy, that's the side opposite 52 degrees. So I'm going to use the sine function. I start by saying sine of theta is the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse side length. Sine of 52 would therefore be equal to Fy, the side opposite, divided by 215 newtons, the side hypotenuse. Now I do my algebra to solve for Fy, pull out my calculator, and it comes out to be 169 newtons. Now I will use the trigonometric method to do a second example, determining the components of a force vector that has magnitude of 162 newtons in a direction of 254 degrees counterclockwise from east. First I'll sketch the vector and label its magnitude. Then I'll sketch a parallelogram around the vector, and I'm going to choose the, the right triangle that is below and to the right of this force vector to analyze. It has an angle of 16 degrees to the west of south. I'm going to call the vertical side the Fy side, and the horizontal side of this triangle is the Fx side. Now I will use the cosine function to relate the length of the side that's adjacent to 16 degrees to the hypotenuse's length. For the length adjacent, that's Fy, and the hypotenuse length will be 162 newtons. Now I do my algebra, and I solve for Fy. I get 156 newtons. The sine of theta will be used to relate the side opposite the 16 degree angle to the hypotenuse. The side opposite is fx. The hypotenuse is 162 newtons again. I'll do my algebra and then use my calculator to solve for fx. It comes out to be 45 newtons. Here at the physics class, when we commonly use the counterclockwise from east convention for describing the direction of a vector, here's one reason why. It presents a shortcut for calculating the values for the components of any vector a. The shortcut equations are ax equal a cosine theta and ay equal a sine of theta. These equations always work provided that the angle theta is the counterclockwise from east direction of the vector. As long as that's the case, you're guaranteed that these shortcut equations work. Here's an example of its use to measure the magnitude and the direction of the components of vector A that is 8.65 kilometers and 320 degrees counterclockwise from east. For AX, I'm going to say 8.65 kilometers times the cosine of 320 degrees. My calculator will tell me positive 6.63 kilometers. I interpret the positive to mean east. And then for AY, it's 8.65 times the sine of 320 degrees. My calculator tells me that that's negative 5.56 kilometers. The negative indicates to me that it's a southward component. Component. As mentioned in this example, when you use this little shortcut equation, you end up with a plus or minus sign on your calculator when calculating the magnitude. Here's what those plus and minus signs mean. When calculating an x component using the cosine, a positive sign for the result means that the direction is east, and a negative sign indicates that the direction of the x component is west. When calculating the y component using the sine function, a positive sign indicates that the component is directed north, and a negative sign indicates that the component is directed south. Here's a summary of this information. 
Well, there you have it. We've learned through two examples how to use the graphical method to determine components of a vector, and through two examples how to use the trigonometric method to determine the components of the vector. I think you got this, but just to be sure, I'd like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. Before I present you with the action plan, maybe you could help us out. First of all, if you enjoyed the video, maybe you could like it, maybe you could subscribe to the channel and get notifications when new videos come out, and maybe you'd like to leave a comment or question in the comment section below. Now for the action plan. First action step. We have a section at our website known as the calculator pad. And one of the chapters is called vectors and projectiles. If you go to that section of our website and you try questions number two through four, you'll find that it's a great follow-up to this method of using the, or the graphical, the, the trigonometric method of vector resolution. Second, we have a series of Minds on Physics app. And app number one is the app that you'd want to go to. You'd find the vectors and projectiles module on there and you're looking for mission VP5 all about vector components and vector resolution. And finally, the last thing we could recommend is that we have a tutorial on our website written in an easy-to-understand language. It's the go-to place. If you want a quick reference, we would invite you to go there. You'll find links to all these resources in the description section below. Whatever method you pick to review, we wish you the best of luck.